Gentlemen, Sean of I the Breather in the Building. Hell yeah. Yeah. What's up, man? How you doing today? How's your day going? Good. Are we live? We are live yeah, I, I, right now. So if you could mute mute the 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 stream audio. One second. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I'm good. Everything's great. Hell yeah. Uh, I know my my show and interview style is a little bit abnormal, but I promise you it's fun. I appreciate you bringing the hot sauce. For those that may not know who you are, Sean, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now and plug or promote anything you'd like. Oh, that's a lot. Um, I sing for uh, a metalcore band, metal band called I the Breather. Um, I do a bunch of random stuff musically too, so I'm very... Uh, I love like the local scene um, and like, you know, do, watching your shit is pretty cool too because I get to find out about a lot of artists not many people get to stumble upon, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm in Madison, Wisconsin now, so I moved to the Midwest to be uh, a dad basically full time. Um, Good for you. Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit far away from Baltimore, a little bit different, but uh, I, I love the people here. They're really sweet and it's a lot different culture. Um, than Baltimore. <laughs> lots of cheese, lots of cheese for sure, I imagine. Yes. When you say you do a lot musically aside from the band, could you elaborate on that? Uh, just as far as like, you know, I don't do management stuff anymore or anything like that, but um, <clears throat> even, if, even if it has to do with features, with, with featuring with bands and, you know, uh, I like to go more in depth with that and do, you know, like I did an interview with you previously with Red Letter, um, getting a little bit more in depth with, with just the feature or if I find a band that I really like, you know, I'll connect with them and, and if they have any, like, questions or if I can give them advice on how to, how to build their brand and get to that next chapter, you know, um, it's cool to actually just be able to give back and not have any credit for it now. So let's say kind of someone's like watching right now and is like, I didn't even know Sean was willing to do guest features. How would they go about hiring you for, to get them on the song? Oh, just hit me up on Facebook. I'm not too good to talk to people. I generally answer anything that comes through, uh, any type of social media. Um, you don't have to go through loops and everything to get a hold of me. Sometimes people are like, we got to clear with the manager. We got to check with the label, this, that, and that. But just hit them up directly. It's super easy. Um, yeah. It, am I correct that the most recent single that you guys have is Brain Sick? Yeah. We briefly got to talk to you about Brain Sick a little bit when you, as you mentioned, kind of joined Red Letter that day. Um, but but we, it was kind of their day, so I didn't get to like really pick your brain. But can you tell me again what Brain Sick means to you and why you wrote it? Ooh, um. Brain sick to me is if you took a step into my brain, um, the feeling that you get from that song is basically the chaos um, that I lived with for many years. Um, so, you know, people, they get a cold or <clears throat> a flu or something and, and, and you know, they, they get over it. You know, it's like, it's like a, a week long thing. Um, but for people with like mental health issues like me um it's it's not a sickness that goes away uh it's a battle for the rest of your life basically um and uh i chose to write a song about it you know um it was very <clears throat> very difficult to write about it put me in like the deepest depression of my life after writing about it because you know, I'm not one of those musicians that can just like write stuff just to write it, you know, like the, there's there's some pieces in this where I was literally this close to like giving up on my life. Um, I think right at the end, uh, there's like a part that says I'm fucking giving up. And I recorded that the night before I like admitted myself into a hospital uh, because I just couldn't get the anxiety to go away. I couldn't get out of the funk. I couldn't stop being depressed and. I just given up, you know, 
Um, but from the love of my kids, you know, it gave me the strength to keep going and, and, uh, even our fans, you know, this song, this song pretty much kind of like saved my life. Wow. That's, that's amazing. And isn't being a dad, the best thing in the world It is totally one of the best, one of the most stressful things, but also one of the most rewarding, uh, by far. Yeah, it really is. Well, Sean, we're glad you're here with us today, man. And I'm sure that the song has impacted other people in the same position. And I imagine you, people have talked to you about it and reached out and said, you helped me. And, yeah. uh, I thank you for opening up about that. Let's jam brain sick for a second and then uh, we'll have a little fun. Let's get it. Who, who's the audio producer that you work with when you do when you do your, all, all your recordings? Uh, production wise, it's everybody in the band. And then um, our friend Jeff Key, he, he does all the uh, engineering work. Okay. So you, got, you guys have been in band for quite a while. Somebody in chat said they saw you in 2012 at Mayhem Fest. Uh, surely you've had a couple of bad shows. We've all had them. Tell me the absolute worst live show the band has ever had. Everything went wrong. Maybe the tech handed you a guitar, your guitar player, a guitar that was out of tune. Strings broke in the first song. Give me the worst show the band's ever played. Oh, man. Okay. Um, a lot of stuff that happened in Australia. <laughs> so um, this is like right... Uh, it was at a point in time where we, we only have one guitar player. We were going to bring a second guitar player, but like the costs it was like, it was like so much more money to bring like another member. And, um, we were just like, all right, well, let's just save the money and, and, and do it on, uh, I think we, we were using logic. Um, did it through practice. Everything was good. You know, we had our run throughs. Um, then we go to play our first show. I think, yeah, in Perth, um, I mean, and, and, and it was crazy. It was almost like a sold-out show. There was, like, tons of people there. It just wasn't um, expecting it at the moment. And then immediately, I, almost immediately, everything shuts down. You know, like a whole set just shuts down. Um, and there's this issue with Logic back then where, like, if there's, like, a vibration, the system just stops. So... Yeah, I mean, and that was like the first song. So I guess you can imagine um, how long of a set that was for us to try and get through with, you know, not only is our click track stopping, um, we don't have anything coming out of the front of the house for an extra guitar or like bass drops or any like the little underlying effects with the song. It was just, I mean, we pulled it off, but we knew it was wrong. And uh it's not a good feeling. Did you did you just say F it and just keep going from track two on and not use Logic? Or did you try and restart it and it just kind of did we it again tried. and you just said, screw it? Yeah, the first song was Caked. And then we were like, all right, we'll try on song two, Caked. Song three, Caked. And I mean, we just kept, like, at that point, you, you, you have, like, intros and stuff that you got to get through. And, like, we got to at least have that um, so we can have, like, a general sense of like our our bpms off the bat at right least it's not going to shut immediately and we can get the you know and, and we can maintain that you know it's like that video of the the drummer where his in-ear monitors went out and the dudes tap and you know like if you're a seasoned enough veteran like something this small like that you can like kind of like get through it so we just kind of had to memorize like the beat we were on for like the next two three minutes you know crazy it was stressful are you, are you down to uh, allow me to ask a couple of chat questions? People have some some stuff they want to ask you. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, someone wants to know about the naked Morios in Allen. The naked Marios in Allentown. Does the that naked. ring a bell at all? Allentown, <laughs> Pennsylvania, I believe. Naked Marios, maybe. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, do you play? Know, man. Do you uh, do you play any video games? Oh yeah, I'm a huge gamer. Top top three video games. Um, well, right now I have a love hate relationship with Madden. Uh, the new one just released. I'm very competitive when it comes to gaming, um, and it's been a rough launch so far with the game freezing. I mean, the other day I came back from like a ten point loss got to overtime and as soon as it went for kickoff my like controller wasn't even responding like oh, no. um 
I'm also a, like an OG StarCraft guy, uh, so I still re- religiously play StarCraft II. Um, I've gotten out of the shooters because there's so many sweaty people in the world, and um, I'm too old for that stress. I don't have the time to uh, be that good. I just want to enjoy it, and I end up getting frustrated. So I tend to stick to things where you can't, like, noob two people or, you know, do crazy things. There's only so much you can do in Madden or so many things you can do in StarCraft. And Do you play you know. Madden as your favorite NFL team, and who is your favorite NFL team? Oh, boy. Um, I'm probably going to get some hate for this, but I am from Baltimore, so been a Ravens fan since the Joe Flacco days. Um, it's funny because I, even even when Joe Flacco was our quarterback, I remember we had a quarterback named Tyrod Taylor who ended up like playing for other teams, but I would always sub Flacco out and play with Tyrod Taylor and people would be playing me like, who, who was this guy he's playing with the quarterback? And I was like doing mobile quarterback stuff before like uh, Lamar. So um, when they got Lamar, it was just like so exciting to have a player like that on our team for Madden. Heck yeah, I'm a Vikings fan. I, I don't always root for this, but I wouldn't mind a a purple, all purple Super Bowl. I'm just saying, that'd be lovely. Uh, he's yeah. saying, to clarify, a bunch of people adoring the set flooded your vision with images of naked Mario on their phones. Oh, shit. Does that ring a bell at all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, like some things you just kind of like block out of your memory, you know? <laughs> there it is. It's back. It's back. Hell yeah. Uh, for someone that maybe has never heard your band before, what would you like to, me to play as the second song? And if there is a music video, I'll play the music video for it. But let's pretend they've never heard your band before. What would you prefer? Oh, I don't know. There's like so many different directions you could go. Um, so if I was trying to catch like maybe the average ear. We should probably throw this in too. I know it's not exactly like it's a feature but uh just as far as a breather track yeah i mean um we have a music video for soul seek that's pretty fun um and and that song's pretty cool i dig it um yeah you're gonna have to yeah i have a breather sumerian was your was your was your time with with ash and sumerian uh positive one you would say you know we had a different experience, I feel like, with Sumerian, um, being that we were very, like, we were managed by Chris Jocelyn, which is one of his best friends. Um, I always got along well with Ash and everybody at Sumerian. We didn't really have any, like, issues like that. It was just, it was just difficult getting further into our career, you know, on a third album. Um, and you have, you know, you want the proper promotion and stuff. I just feel like maybe towards the end, we kind of fell through the cracks. You know, the label is getting like, so many massive artists and it's like understandable, you know, they can't, they can't uh, massively promote everybody or they can, but it's just like a resaturation at that point. Um, but yeah, I had a great experience and very, you know, they're, they're, they're the reason why I was able to live my dream. Um, it's funny. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll go on a little backstory that literally nobody knows about. Um, we first got signed uh, by Sumerian in 2009, around December. Um, and then we were supposed to be flying, I was flying to California to record vocals and meet the label by myself and with the manager. And like the day before I was supposed to go there, they like canceled. I remember the Terps had just lost in like the, the final four or whatever. And then like two minutes later, my manager's calling, Hey, our flight tomorrow is canceled. We're, we're double booked. We can't go. Um, and I was like, damn. So, you know, like two weeks go by, then we fly in. Um, and we're supposed to be going to see Periphery that night. So it's my favorite, know, my favorite Sean, band. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're dope. I meet up with Sean Keith and he drives me and Chris to uh, the office and I meet everybody at the team, super sick. Um, then we go back to, I was actually staying at Ash's house um, with Chris and um, we get ready and then it's time to go to the show. Well, I was not ready for this, um, but I should have known uh, a little bit more about Ash before I, you know, went on the trip. But um, he puts on on Forgiven, and at that point in time, Forgiven had like the singing chorus in it. And uh, yeah, dude, I ate the shit. You know, he he was like, "Yo, sing this." <laughs> I fucking man, um, I wasn't ready for it, dude. I was just trying to belt out the chorus in a car, 
to an instrumental in front of Ash. It, it was it was just like one of those moments where you're like, damn, that's a reality check right there, you know? So what you're saying is be prepared at any time, any moment to perform your craft or I, I kind of... point two. Yeah, you always got to be on your toes. I get it, I get it. Do yeah. a little soul seeking, if you will. Dude. I mean, I'm already a huge fan. I'm just playing it for people that may not know, but it's it's superb. Uh, do you have any odd vocal warm-up technique or tricks that you do before every show? Oh, boy. Um, I'm probably one of the very few vocalists that you'll come in contact with um, that don't warm up. Mine... My warm-up is more mind over matter. Um, like I said, I have mental health issues, so for me, warming up is getting my brain ready to go. Um, once my brain's there, I'm good. Um, yeah, it's just like I got to get my mind right. You know, listen to certain music. I'll listen to some heavy music, um, some King 810 or something crazy, or, yeah, just get, get in the zone. Um the, yeah, first time I voice. Well, I mean, we've been headlining for the past couple of years too, so I do kind of get like some time with my voice before we play. But um, before I go on, it's just I hydrate. That's the most important thing, honestly. At least three hours prior to my set, I'm I'm chugging water. I want to be peeing clear by the time I go on stage because you think you know hydrating on stage is drinking water while you're up there, but um, no, you got to be like. Hydrated, hydrated. <laughs> nah, I feel you. Lots of dancing, lots of sweating, lots of head banging. You gotta be hydrated. Uh, I do yeah. want to ask you a bunch more questions before we do. Let's do a little trivia. I know you brought some hot sauce, but I need some uh, information about you to do the trivia. What okay. movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia about either this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Oh, boy. Ooh, uh, definitely Stranger Things. Hell yeah! Did you hear that? Uh, the the next season they said nine episodes and the finale is two and a half hours. I'm here for it. You can make it's it totally four hour. for real. <laughs> Big of four hours. I'd I'd sit there in one sitting and watch all four hours for sure. Cannot wait. Okay, yeah. give me a second to look up uh some trivia on Stranger Things. <laughs> All right, bro, so these are really hard. I'm just warning you ahead of time. My, my goal is to stump you. So here we go. Stranger Things trivia. I've never done a trivia before, bro. This is the first time I've ever done a trivia. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Great. In chapter seven, Dustin and the boys are advised by who on how to make a sensory deprivation tank. It's their favorite teacher. That's your hint. Yes, the science teacher. What was his name? Oh, fuck. What was his name? I don't know his name. I just know he's a science teacher. I'm bad with names. This is not. This is, no way. <laughs> <laughs> that is technically a stump. Don't worry. I'll do the hot sauce with you, but you said you brought some hot sauce. I'll just grab a random one over here that I know is pretty spicy. It's called Cowboy Bacon Hot Sauce from Argentina, but it is quite, it's got some bite to it. Um, while we check out the hot sauce, I'm going to go ahead and throw on Prey. What is Prey about? Prey, well, I'm also going to be doing some hot sauce. This is mine before doing some Ole Bay hot sauce. Um, Prey is just, it was like a, um, a battle with like me and myself or like uh the demon that has always like haunted your life and this is that fight with that demon you know um so in theory like the the reaper in this video um is my mental illness right you know um it's got me chained up it's got me all these things and it's basically a fight with the devil or like whatever uh, whatever that has conquered your 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 brain and in a sense you know those those fights you have to overcome 
So um, it could be broader, uh, but yeah, that's generally what it's about for me. Makes sense, for sure. So uh, what's the story with, with you getting the Nick in the band? Um, so yeah, that was an interesting um, turn of events, I guess. Um, I remember when Logan and I were just starting to work on for your, figuring out a release for Prey, you know, you, you got to remember that I had also been outside of like this industry for so long. Um, no disrespect to Nick. I just, I didn't know who Nick was. Um, and, um, he was like, yeah, my buddy Nick's gonna, gonna be doing a review for this. And I was like, Oh, sick. Cool. And I think, I think what happened, it's like Nick released a video and I was like, Oh, this dude's like the real deal. That's cool. Like, yeah. And I, I like really dug who he was as a person. And then I like checked into his channel and like found out like what he was really doing. And, and I was just like, man, this is really cool. Um, and I think we were like, at that point we were like looking for a guitar player. Um, and um, we blasted out like an email thing. Um, and me and Logan were like, man, like, I don't think we're going to find our guy in, the, in, this, in these emails, you know, like we're getting all these submissions, everybody's great, but like, we don't have anybody that's like standing out, you know, you can be talented. And then you can be talented and have like your own thing that like separates you. Right. Um, that's what that's what generally makes or breaks a musician. You gotta have that like thing. Um, yeah. So we went through hundreds of videos, and um, I don't even remember how the conversation got brought up at this point. I kind of forget. Um, but yeah, he ended up joining. Um, Is he still currently yeah. in the band? I, it's, it's, it's a, I don't know. It's a weird thing. Like Nick's like kind of like doing his own thing. Um, and he's, he's a really busy dude. Um, and we have, we haven't really been focused too much. Like we have like a good chunk of like stuff written for this, for this, uh, album or whatever we had been working on. Um, but we had kind of taken a break after the reunion tour. Cause like that didn't really like incorporate Nick. You know, um, and then after that, you know, I had like a big move coming up. I had like all this stuff coming up. So it's been like kind of like on the back burner. Um, but yeah, that dude's like busy as crap. Um, and I understand, you know, um, but yeah, he was he was in Brain Sick and, and did the video and um, wrote wrote like a, a good chunk of like we had like the skeleton written. And then Nick kind of came back in and was like, this is my touch to it. Um so like yeah, you know, um that's just basically how we operated as a unit, you know. Me and Logan get the get the music done and then Nick would just sprinkle his little magic on there and then add a little sizzle. Add a little yeah. sizzle to it. Hell yeah. Uh we're gonna give you a redemption question right now on Stranger Things. <laughs> Going all the way back to the first episode. What was the name of the boy who vanished in Hawkins, Indiana? Oh, no. The very first, the whole start of Stranger Things, this kid disappears. Will. It was Will. What was Will's last name? Oh, come on. It starts with a B. Oh, God. I'm going to give it to you anyway, but I just want to see if you can get this last name. No, I'm not going to get it. Will Byers is the answer. Byers, Will Byers. Yeah. We'll spin it one yeah. more time. What's a Sean? What's a what's a piece of advice somebody in the music industry has has given you that kind of changed things for you, or a really really bad mistake the band made early on in your career that you don't want a starting up band to make? Um, Man, it's so hard to blow. I guess what it all really comes down to is being very smart with like the financial aspects of the band. Um, you know, uh, you have to be really smart. I've kicked myself in the ass more times than I can count um, with that kind of stuff. And it's difficult, you know, especially when you don't have like management and whatnot. So it's good to have a manager that like is the brains in that aspect. You know, I'm, it's so difficult being a musician these days. You have to be more than a musician, right? Um, 
and most musicians aren't like necessarily good with finances and money and stuff. Um, so it's always good to have you know, that stuff taken care of. You got to be very smart. It's like almost like you're scared to spend any money because then you turn around and you're like, oh crap, we have money for this. You right. know what I mean? So it's like you got to be very smart um, where your investments are. And then like even, even like, the smallest thing of like doing a merch design that like tanks, you know, that could put you down at like a deep, deep hole where like those designs just aren't selling or something, you know, um, and he thought they would. Um, so yeah, there's like a lot of like the business aspect of a band is like something that, that is very difficult to navigate. So just be smart about how you go about the business essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got time just for a handful more questions. Chat is begging me to ask uh, another one here that says, in recent memory, what's one of the most memorable bands that you've played a show with? Maybe a band that you had never heard of before that just kind of blew you out of the water. Maybe they opened for you guys or something. The most recent. So that would be like... Not necessarily the most recent show, but just something that kind of... A band that kind of just made a memory to you. Like you remember these guys just killing it on a, a tour that they are a show that they open for you. Um, like an opening act. Sorry, man. I, I, I'm trying to figure out like if, if this is a band that I was touring with or a band I was opening or either, either just something, something oh, yeah, that you remember I, just killing it that, yeah, that we yeah, may not I mean, have maybe have heard of. Yeah. So in 2012, like there, it's, it's very difficult to top slip not, um, there's not many bands that, that do it like Slipknot. Um, and it was also like one of those cool things where like I'm sitting down and catering. And at this point in time, I had no idea what any of them looked like, you know? So I think I'm sitting around like a bunch of like techs and like, you know, people and then finding out that it's like Slipknot. It's just like cool to like, um, you know, you look up to these people like your whole life basically. And then you're on tour with them and, and like, you know, day in and out, you're partying with them and sharing memories, and, and it's cool. Um, this is awesome. Yeah. Now, I know you had submitted a band from Buffalo that you're, you've are you been feeling. Why did you pick uh, My City, My Secret? Oh, man. Um, so I did, I managed bands for a little bit towards the end of I the Breather, um, and this was, this was one of the bands that I managed um I love them as human beings uh some of the best best dudes just like everybody else says when they're when they're talking about somebody but um those guys decided to come back and they they actually recorded with Grant and Carson who we did um Life Reaper with um and yeah they're on their way back and like I love how all this turned out and I just want people to hear them um these guys are insanely talented human beings um when it comes to like visualizations figuring out what they want on the screen with like the sound and it, it just all works out they know what they're doing let's dive right in i've never heard them before my secret i'm sorry my city my secret neon eyes oh yeah this is fire we're gonna we're gonna put them in we're gonna put them oh in. yeah no doubt those guys yeah they definitely deserve it how did the how did the red letter burn it down track come about? Dude, it, it goes back to those guys. Um, I so the members of Red Letter are friends with the guys in My City, My Secret, and yeah, it's like a full circle kind of thing. Um, they they kind of met me through My City, My Secret. So then, like, we did the feature, and then like. Here we are, you know, my city, my secrets releasing music again. And now I can like shout them out too. You know, it's pretty cool. It all worked out in the end, it, it, but you're right. It kind of, it did come all, all come full circle like that. Hell Dude, yeah. That's what happens when you like invest more emotion into stuff than, and not just like plaster your name on it, you know, like you, you, you um, have meaning behind everything. And then there's like stories that go with it too. You know, a lot of stories in between. Hell yeah. Let's jam it. I'm going to kind of scoot it forward a little bit to kind of get to where you are. 
yeah, and, and it's it's cool how they, they worked you into the video. I imagine you weren't there for the video shoot, but the way you shot it, you almost can't tell how it was like blended in perfectly right there. Yeah, uh, I definitely was not anywhere near fire. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a fear of fire? No, not at all. That would have been sick as shit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, we only have time for like one or two more, Sean, but I really appreciate you doing this. Um, we're, I asked you earlier the worst show ever that you ever played. What would you say was the best show ever, and what country was it in? Oh, man. Damn, dude. Can I do two? Sure. Okay. Um, one of them, I'll make this, I'll make this quick. Um, one of them was at the Pittsburgh date at Mayhem Festival. Um, had been like a rainy, gloomy day. You know, you you get those days and it's like, meh. You know, you're like, just kind of getting through it. Um, mm. And we went on stage and dude, I don't know what it was in the water that day, in that rain, but those guys were lit. Um, there's videos of it online, but uh, the security in front of the stage could not keep up with the crowd surf. It, it was it was like a, a never-ending wave of human beings. Um, and then uh, at the end of the set, I was like supposed to announce a signing, um, completely forgot about the signing, which like ended up tanking because I didn't announce it. Um, <laughs> but, but I jumped into the crowd and they, and they like pushed me back to like the soundboard. It was like really cool. Um, the opposite like, way of the stage all the way to the, to the dude, like front of the crowd or back of the crowd. Yeah. It's one of those moments where like you dream of as, as a kid. And of course I had to live it out, you know, um, that's cool. The second, uh, coolest memory was we were, uh, after our European tour, we had two shows that were in Russia. Um, and this is like right when the ruble collapsed, um, in like 2014 or something. So like the, our guarantees doubled for them. And, uh, the day before we're supposed to fly in, they're like, duh, <laughs> we can't afford, uh, two shows like your guarantees doubled. Um, so we collectively just made a decision in that time. We're like, well then we'll make the uh, St. Petersburg show free. You know, anybody mm -hmm. can come. We'll even, we'll even charge merch like donation wise, you know, uh, pay what you can and here, you know, pick what merch you want. Um, so we had no idea where we were going into, you know, we're in Russia um, or like a Soviet train, from Moscow to St. Petersburg. Yeah, St. Petersburg, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and dude, it ended up being like, I, I don't know if it was sold out, but like the, there was nowhere to go in that venue. <laughs> um, and yeah, it, it worked out, you know, like we ended up getting rid of the merch so we didn't have to spend the extra money to get it back to America, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, everybody left happy, and then we took a 5 a.m. flight back to America. That is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Great story. Uh, final question for you, sir. Uh, I'm going to let the floor be yours, but you openly, it's not even really a question. It's just throw out whatever you'd like to promote and plug, or, or I, the Breather, has this coming up. We're doing this kind of run tour 2023. Maybe expect to this and then that. Floor is yours. Say whatever you'd like at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, so I guess right now, like kind of we're in like the limbo uh, process with the album. Um, cause I had to focus on my mental health, I mean, like again, uh, for a little bit cause it's always an issue. Um, so like, yeah, I con conquered that. So like, I kind of am like ready in a sense, like be finish the writing process. I feel mentally, uh, healthy enough to, you know, dive back into it. Um, so hopefully, you know, we have something, um, to, to give back to everybody. Um, you know, people still listen. So, you know, I want to give them a little bit more. Um, yeah, outside of that, um, I might be doing a little bit of like solo stuff in the future as well. Cool. Like do a little bit of them. Like there's a little happy music and then pissed off music so I can have, you know, both of my uh, outlets, you know, good mental, you know, outflux. Of, I get it. Emotions. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you don't want to yell at everybody all the time. You want to just, you just want to marinate and, and uh, sing to them a little bit. Yeah. 
Dude, <laughs> one thing I do want to touch on before um, this it, this tonight almost did not happen because I had I had messaged you like, yeah, dude, I was I was in a meeting earlier. Um, I didn't tell you this, uh, and I was like, man, I hear a lot of fire trucks. There's a lot going on out there. I didn't, I didn't ask what happened. I saw the picture. I saw the video, and I I was just like, oh man, it looks like it looked like a tree came through someone's house or something like something along the lines of that. <laughs> no, dude. All I know is I was in a meeting and I heard kids screaming and then like fire trucks, and I was like, oh, maybe the kids are just playing loud. You know, the fire. I live off of like kind of like a main road, so I just figured they were going down the road. And then after a while, I was like 20 minutes in. I was like, man, they're not stopping. I'm just going to like take a gander out of my window and see if I can see any driving by. I look out the window and the back entrance to my apartment complex, full of fire trucks. And then I run to like my kid's room to where I can see like the front. There's like fire hoses going down. Everything's shut off. <clears throat> I'm like, what is going on? I'm, like go into um, – <clears throat> the hallway to get out of my building and all I can smell is smoke. It was, it was like, you know, that smell of like plastic burning, like that's what it smelled like. And I got outside and as soon as I got out of my door, I'm like looking maybe like, that's where I took the picture from or like sent that thing from. Um, but I guess like the, the laundry unit, which is like underneath the building called on fire. So, like, the fire ended up going straight up the whole entire building wow. and caught fire. And I had no idea. <laughs> I've been trapped in here since. I, we hope, we hope everyone's all right because that's, yeah. that's, that's scary. That's, that's, that's the sad part is, that, you know, I definitely hope that those families are able to, like, man, I literally just moved here last week. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. But, dude, I'm glad it worked out, man, because – that very well could have been my building. You know, I'm literally like 20 feet away. So, um, wild. Well, you're safe. We, we hope everyone else is safe. Uh, Shaw, we only asked you for 15 and 20 minutes. You've basically given us 40, man. You're an absolute just legend, rock star, just one of the coolest people for real. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, your music's amazing. Uh, we're so happy you're with us today. We know you have the struggles with, with the mental health stuff, but um, it, it shows in your writing that, uh, you know, you're able to to move beyond it, step above it by the love of your kids. And, and that's one of the coolest things about being a dad is, you know, yeah, that exactly. But you're awesome, man. Thank you so much for let's, doing this. We really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, Let's all just collectively cross our fingers that my brain can handle like another album because I want to give it. I want to, you know, it's that's just like hope. You know, it's not for the lack of trying. It's just, yeah, let's hope we can get there. I believe you will. And we look forward to it, sir. Sean, and thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for real. I am the breather. Hell yeah! That's a great night. Thanks for doing some hot sauce with me, and I was only able to stump you once, technically. Bye, guys. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too. What an awesome guy, man. He really opened up. He really opened up, and. uh his music's powerful. His music's really, really powerful. And uh, I just appreciate him. He didn't have to go into that depth and detail, uh, but he chose to, and I thought that was really cool. And and it's, it's cool for people that may have struggling issues themselves to see someone else openly talk about it and hopefully can better themselves as well, just like he did. And he found a joy in the love of his children. And that's amazing. Whatever it takes to still kick ass, baby. And he is absolutely doing just that, kicking ass. Sean of Either Breather, please guys, if you enjoyed his music, his story, please follow him, support him in any way you can. Hit the follow button like I have on YouTube, smash the YouTube subscribe button, whatever you can do, support him. And we await some new music from the band. And I'm really looking forward to it. I love when, when we get to like really deep dive and pick people's brains because I was very familiar with, with the band, but now I go back and I'm going to hear his music and hear it a different way to hear some of the struggles that, that uh, some you know artists, example him, get go through on a daily basis in their writing and their material. So please support them. What a hell of an interview. Really appreciate him for doing that. Let's